Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. So before we get started, make sure to hit the like button. Also subscribe to my channel. In this video, we will talk about AR versus VR. Which technology will shape the future? So make sure to watch the full video. Virtual reality, VR, and augmented reality, AAR, are two technologies that have the potential to significantly change the world in which we live. However, currently they are struggling to truly capture the hearts and minds of consumers and businesses. So what does the future hold? Chris Longstaff, Senior Director of Product Marketing and Technology, Power VR, Imagination Technologies explains. Whether it's because the technology is generally cumbersome, tethered, or expensive, or because the visuals do not appear to be authentic enough, penetration is currently limited. This highlights just how far the technologies have to go before they can truly become ingrained in our day-to-day -day lives. For the sake of my sanity and yours, as the reader, I'll keep the two classifications of headsets, VR headsets, where what the user sees is purely virtual and has no direct view of their surroundings, and AR headsets, which maintain the wearer's direct view of the real world and overlay data onto that view. As an aside, mixed and merged reality can be seen as subsets or supersets of the VR and AR headset categories, depending on your point of view. These devices basically overlay graphics onto real or virtual worlds. For example, the virtual image could include a camera feed of the real world. There is some overlap in the applications of AR and VR, and mixed slash merged, but also quite significant differences. Two of the main applications for VR today are gaming and immersive, 360 degrees, video playback. While gaming is also an application for AR, the focus of AR is more on professional and educational use cases. We will of course see massive evolution of both technologies in the coming years, and therefore in the uses they are put to. As an example, whilst both could be used for viewing videos, in the case of VR, it may be an immersive private experience as opposed to AR that will seemingly project it onto your wall for an open experience. What the numbers say about AR and VR? VR and AR technologies are rapidly evolving and growing, but the adoption rate is still very low. The latest figures are often skewed when quoted in the press by the inclusion of Google Cardboard or Laterally Daydream type devices which use your smartphone for display and processing inside a dumb or nearly dumb optical headset. Whilst this use case will definitely help drive the ecosystem, it is limited in driving hardware specifications and dedicated silk evolution. If we look at figures for dedicated VR headsets and ignore the opportunistic smartphone-based VR, we see that the market leader Sony shipped 429,000 units in Q1 2017, HTC shipped 190,000, and Facebook Oculus shipped 99,000 units for a total of 719,000 units. For context, this is around 0.1% of smartphone shipments in the same period, or around 1% of the shipment of smart TVs in the US alone in the same period. The VR headset figures are worldwide. These volumes for shipments of VR headsets are, by any measure, tiny. In case you are wondering why I haven't spoken about AR headsets yet, according to ABI Research, the total shipment of AR headsets in 2016 was only 75,000 units, or a barely registering 0.005% of smartphone shipments. We need to be clear that AR and VR are nascent technologies. And as ever, we need to let the technology advances catch up with our imaginations. One of the best analogies I have seen on the web, as well as being an interesting read on VR in general, is it by DP Review author Dale Baskin. He compares the current generation of VR headsets to an Osborne One portable computer, and clearly we have a way to go in terms of hardware. Whilst VR headsets may have some way to go in terms of form factor and functionality, at least the AR headsets had some fairly sleek form factors available, as the recently released Google Glass Enterprise Edition. However, the performance and battery life of these devices are still limited. Predicting the future of AR and VR? As an IP provider, the Power VR business unit of Imagination Technologies is typically working three to five years ahead of products being available for end users. 
This means that we have to predict the requirements very early for markets that are still yet to mature. For some time now, we've been looking at what will drive the requirements for VR and AR over the next few years. There is a relatively easy split in terms of VR and AR head-mounted displays HMDs. Those that do the majority of processing on board, standalone HMDs, and those that do the processing off-board, tethered HMDs, connected to the processing unit via a cumbersome cable or a wireless link, such as those by DisplayLink. Due to the lack of freedom of movement a wired tethered solution gives, looking forward, I expect the mainstream solutions to be tethered wirelessly, which needs to overcome the latency and transmission bandwidth issues, or standalone. Taking VR first, how do we as an industry advance? There are many reasons for the relatively sluggish VR uptake, but we must put user experience at the top of that list. If the user experience was great, then the obstacles of cost and market fragmentation, as well as form factor, would all be easily overcome. The main issues with the user experience of headsets today are in relation to low resolution, inadequate frame rates, and color depth, motion to photon latency, the time it takes the display to update from any movement, and form factors. In terms of tethered headsets, as I have mentioned, I expect we will transition to mainly wireless solutions, with power consumption a key issue to overcome. We need to see a step change in resolution for both standalone and tethered headsets. The current market-leading headsets have a resolution of around 1kx 1k per eye, with a field of view of around 110 degrees. Samsung is upping the resolution in the next generation Gear VR to over 2kx 2k per eye, which gives a noticeable improvement in quality. The general industry consensus seems to be that a resolution of 4k per eye at 120 Hz should give a worthwhile boost in user satisfaction although we are seeing some companies targeting much high resolutions. Is there a winner? The industry has some way to go for both AR and VR to produce really compelling solutions for end users. We have a traditional chicken and egg situation, with the current low volumes limiting the investment that companies are willing to make. It will undoubtedly take something big for the companies to make that initial investment in dedicated socks or standalone HMDs. Without the step change in performance, AR and VR may fail to ever achieve their true potential. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. Before you go, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.